Welcome back to Celebrity Radio. It's Alex Belfield talking to some of the world's biggest stars and some of my favourite people. And one of my favourite bands ever is UB40. They're back on tour this autumn. Robin, Earl, Norman, Jimmy and Brian. They're the five original members of UB40. I'm delighted to say that Robin Campbell joins us on the phone now. How are you doing? I'm good. It must be amazing to be you, because when we consider your back catalogue, there are some incredible songs that still sound as good today as they did 30 years ago when they were first released. It's remarkable, isn't it? Yeah, I can't quite explain why or anything. It's just, uh, I guess, we're lucky that we make a sound that's uh, that's fairly unique and uh, that's quite popular. Was there always an alchemy between the voices and the band and the way that you grew up? I mean, to be so close and to be family, I guess, is one of the greatest privileges, but it also can get overwhelming, can't it? Well, I guess if you live in each other's pockets for, you know, a lifetime, then I guess it can, you know, with with any group of people, it becomes like family, you know. Uh, I consider the whole whole of the band as... uh, a band of brothers you know that we've we've grown up since we were kids together and we've gone through everything together and um i think you know i'll go through phases of of loving and hating in equal measure i'm sure you do i've seen you probably live 10 or 15 times over the years and i don't know what it is about your music the way you play it or what you do but it's an instant stand up get on your feet and join in it's high energy isn't it the audience really love it yeah we we have a party we always have done and uh, if anything i think we're probably better at it now than than we were you know years ago i think um, our audience knows what to expect when they come and they definitely come expecting a party and it's usually what we have how important is the sound system i mean when i've seen you live before it is quite loud and the baseline of what you do is so paramount you can't just work to any karaoke machine can you no, it's uh, it's reggae, you know, and uh, the the bass is the most prominent uh, instrument. You know, it's all about the bass line. It's all about the B line. <laughs> and, uh, you know, if if uh, if the bass and drums aren't, um, aren't moving your diaphragm, then it's not working properly. So, yeah, that's like the the main requisite before you start. You know, is uh, to get the bass and drums going properly, and the rest is just. Uh, the icing on top I think people find it hard to believe there you were just a load of brothers a band of brothers in Birmingham doing what you do um, as kids and then becoming an international success does that ever become normal I was driving through Florida in January and there you were then I was in Vegas in May and there you were on the radio I come back to Nottingham where I live and you're played there the international side of it has to still be mind blowing because so few experience that let alone for the amount of time that you have yeah um, yeah, it's still. I mean, we've there aren't many places we haven't been uh, several times, so we kind you kind of get used to it, you know. But it's it's always. Um, I mean, the whole the whole of our careers has been a sort of pinch yourself experience, you know, because obviously when we started, we had no expectations of of well i suppose we had dreams you know we thought we'd be successful but not to the degree that we have been it's uh you know people only can only dream of that kind of success and you know it's uh it's a wonderful thing does it become normal walking out in front of 10,000 20,000 30,000 people on an average night does that ever become okay and regular um yeah for, well it has for me i don't get nervous anymore um, I mean, I haven't for a long time. To me, that's that's home. It's what you do. It's um, I guess you know, it's like any other profession. If you if you practice it for long enough, then it becomes normal to you. You know, it becomes second nature. I, I don't think you can ever get used to the the buzz. You know, the it's, there's a sort of natural adrenaline rush. You know, that you get mm-hmm. when you're playing to to people. But I don't think the numbers matter really. It's uh, it's just about an emotional communication between you and a crowd, you know, whatever the size of the crowd, really, whether it's 5,000 or 50,000, you know. I mean, we've even we've played to billions, but, you know, in, uh, in, in, the, in the Bollywood Awards, we played live uh, in India, and the audience was, was several billion people. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, that gets a bit mind-boggling, but really, you, you can only communicate with the people that you can see, you know, and... Uh, that's, I, I don't suppose you ever get used to 
the emotional side of it, but uh, I think you get used to handling it. You know, I think you get used to actually walking out on stage in front of thousands of people, and that that, that doesn't phase me anymore. Mm. But if I stop and think about it, then I can get quite emotional. Yeah, incredible. And then we talk about being very attractive and having fans and being a sex symbol. I'm a deeply unattractive man, Robin, and I've never had this. What does that feel like when you feel the roar of that scream and they're waiting for you at stage door? That isn't normal. You know that, don't you? Yeah, it's it's not normal. Um, it's a it's a sort of it's a strange situation to be in because of course it isn't normal, but uh, it's it's also something that you kind of just get used to, you know. Um, and it just becomes part of the job, and you you kind of treat it as um, as a joke, really. You know, just as long as you as long as you you're nice to people, I think that's that's all that counts. You know, it's. Uh, you can't take it too seriously. Were there ever moments where you took the arsehole pill and became the rock star and the pop star and, and lost yourself for a moment? I guess being around brothers is better because they'll pull you back down to earth and there can't be too many stars when you're around your mother and things like that. But were there periods in history when you, you got carried away? Well, I don't know about it personally, but certainly as a band, I think we got carried away a bit in the sort of late 80s. Um, uh, you know, I think every band that has uh, an incredible amount of success uh, gets surrounded by a, an atmosphere of, uh, I don't know, um, sycophants. And you just, you know, if you start believing your own press, then you're in trouble. And mm -hmm. I think occasionally uh, everybody falls victim to that kind of ego trip, you know. Um, but I think, like you were saying, if, you, if you're with a... You, a band of mates that you've grown grown up with that you've been together since you were kids that you tend to get pulled back down you know uh, anyone gets carried away and the rest of us will uh, quickly bring them back to earth mm. is the greatest pop song ever kingston town <laughs> <laughs> um I, I i don't know it's it's a bit hard to to you know to vote on your own songs but god i love that song i'd never get well, bored playing it on the radio I, it was voted um, Britain's favourite holiday tune, apparently. I saw in some poll a couple of years back, so it's obviously very popular. Um, even though it wasn't, it wasn't that big a hit. It just seems to be one of those songs that uh, we have to play uh, every time we do a show, you know. And it's, it just seems to be one of those eternal favourites. Yeah. I mean, for me, it's a sort of back of the Shara song. It's a song that you can sing whether you can sing or you can't sing. And that's why the whole family join in. It's, it's the perfect pop song in a way. It's got the rhythm, the melody, the song, the tune, the words, the everything. It's perfect. Yeah, if only we'd written it. it was, uh, it's, a, it's a wonderful song. And it's, it's a song of, you know, of, my, of my youth. It was a song we always wanted to cover because mm. the original is uh, obviously... A, a Jamaican record of course are you glad you had your beginnings when you did because I look at how they're struggling now they seem to become very famous very quickly and are got rid of within a second and we never remember them to have your longevity only seems possible if you got started when you did it it seemed like you were in the perfect time to be pop stars yeah uh, yeah it's all that's kind of disappearing now and uh, well the whole industry is changing the uh, record companies are disappearing fast shrinking uh, a few majors are surviving and and uh, running the whole show um it's just you know records don't sell in the numbers that they did then it's not it's not possible i don't think that uh, that you could ever shift the numbers the figures that we were shifting in those days uh, that kind, that whole industry has just collapsed hasn't it yeah, sad. It's really sad because there's no investment in the future. It seems like they want you for now and one hit's enough. Whereas I think your guys, they gave you a chance, didn't they? If you had a flop, you could come back and have a hit again. Oh, absolutely. We we were allowed to release whatever we wanted. We've we never had a, a problem with a record label saying to us, we don't want to release that or, you know, that's not a single. We just had complete artistic control and uh, whatever we gave to Virgin EMI, uh, who were the, the label we were with for the for you know most of our career, um, whatever we gave them, they just 
they just put it out. You can find out more about the upcoming tour. UB40.global is the website starting in Leeds on September 30th via Newcastle, Leicester, Edinburgh, Carlisle, Oxford, Leamington, Spa. You can go to Liverpool, Norwich, Northampton, Manchester. I'll see you in Nottingham at Rock City, Guildford, and the tour continues through the rest of the year and then around the world too. I guess the one thing we have to talk about, Robin, is the issue with Ali, your brother, and his split from the group. There are two UB40s on the road, but you make it clear on your website that there's only one official UB40 and that's you. Is that the case? We are the original UB40, albeit minus uh, a couple of members, but we are still the original UB40. We've never stopped playing and recording as UB40. So for ex-members of the band to put a band together and then call themselves UB40 is obviously... uh, it's it's misleading for the fans, and you know it's not acceptable to us uh, because we're still we're still here and we're still working. So it makes me very sad, but mm. uh, it's it's um, it's something it's it's our living, you know, it's our livelihood and it's our name. Uh, and unfortunately, we're we're having to take him to court. Um, I mean, you know, they're spending a lot of money keeping it out of court, and we're spending a lot of money chasing them, trying to get them into mm. court because obviously, once it gets into court. They will have to stop. They they can't carry on. Uh, they haven't got a leg to stand on, and it's it's um, you know it's still our band. We've never we've never stopped. So they really don't have an argument. But once it gets to court, then they'll be stopped. But it's getting them to court. Uh, it's a very long winded process. Yeah. They just keep keep change, moving the goalposts. You know. Is there any hope this could be sorted out between you? Because I think. I just want you all to be back together as you be 40 and happy. Is there any hope of that or has it just gone too far? I I think it has gone too far now. Mm. Uh, I think it was when, when Ali left to go solo, you know, we, uh, we were sort of, we were shocked and and bereft, but you know, we wished him all the best and we, we hoped that uh, he'd have some success, you know, on his own. Mm. Um, When that kind of backfired on him, and he then decided that he was going to uh, use our name. Everything just became um, bitter, you know. And it's it's most unfortunate. He doesn't talk to us at all. Uh, he hasn't spoken to me or uh, Duncan, uh, my other younger brother who replaced him. Um, he hasn't spoken to us since he left eight years ago. So it's you know it's it's not pleasant. And I don't think there's ever a chance of. Uh, of us being back together again as a band. Does it make you sad that not only have you lost a band member, the voice of your group in a way, but also a brother? I mean, it's it's disastrous on both levels, on a human personal level and a business level too. Uh, yeah, it makes me sad, but I'm kind of over it now. It's gone on for a long time and he's, uh, the, the vitriol that he's heaped upon me and other members of the band since he left has, has just been shocking really, so... I'm uh, I'm kind of over it now, you know. Do you think there's anything he could do to apologise or he won't? There is no way back for him to make this right with you as a group. Well, there's certainly no way back for him within the band. Uh, there's too much hurt gone on, you know. There's, and not just, not from me, but uh, ev- every other member, you know. They all considered themselves, uh, you know, inseparable friends, you know. Brian, mm. Brian Travers, our sax player, has been, you know, uh, best friends inseparable with Ali since they were 11 years old so um, you know <laughs> there's there's too much wounding gone on over the years mm. um, and since he left the things he said about his uh, you know his brothers is um, it's it's a, it's an irreparable situation I think where does this leave the family do you still have parents around or are they seeing all of this well my dad's passed away um and uh, mum's still around, but she's getting on. But uh, she refuses to take sides. She's got four sons and she loves them all equally, you know, yeah. which is the way it should be. Um, but I still see all of my family. The only one I don't see is, is one of my younger brothers. And mm. I'm still tight with my other two brothers and the rest of our family. And in fact, I see, um, I see Ali's kids from his first marriage who all still live here in Birmingham, you know, and uh, I mean, we're we're a, a tight family unit, we see each other regularly, um, and 
His uh, his kids from his first marriage are still very friendly with my kids. Mm. Uh, they've stayed at my house. You know, it's uh, it's like a normal family. The only difference is there's there's uh, one of us that isn't there anymore. Yeah, it makes me it sad. Doesn't, doesn't appear to want to be either, so that's fine. Did you ever get to the bottom of why he made the decision to walk away like he did? Did he ever actually privately tell you this is why I've done what I've done? Um, he didn't privately tell me. He told every every member of the band in a in a, a band meeting that right. he was um, he'd been offered a, a tour to go solo and he was taking it. Right. Simple simple as that. He was going solo. Um, he then. Uh, after he left, he, he sort of publicly changed his story and said it was about management and all sorts of other issues. But, you know, what he told us was that uh, he had a, a solo tour booked in the summer mm-hmm. and he wanted to do it. And we said, don't be ridiculous, we've got our own tour booked. Uh, you can't do that. And he said, OK, I'm leaving. And it was that simple. He walked out at that point. Um, he... We actually uh, made him stay because we were committed to a tour of Australia. Uh, so he stayed for a tour of Australia while not talking to any of us. Mm. It was very uncomfortable. Uh, he finished that tour and walked off stage for the last time and we've never seen him since. It's so sad on a human level as much as a business level and of course a musical level too. I guess he felt he was the band because he was the voice of it and that was naive because of course music transcends that, doesn't it? It's the music as much as nobody's bigger than any band. Absolutely. And uh, that's an argument I had with him over many years, you know, that uh, a band is the sum of its parts, you know, and it's... and the the success that we'd had was was together and i knew that uh, he he uh, he had ambitions you know for a solo career and he really had started to believe that stuff earlier for the first you know 20 odd years of our career he didn't believe any of that stuff he totally believed that uh, the success we had was because we were together you know and the and the contributions that we all made was mm. were equally important for the end result of the band but uh, he started to change his mind in the last few years and he was he was obviously unhappy for the last mm. uh, few years with the band and that's why I say when when he left I was I was upset about it but I, I think I knew he was going to go even if the rest of the band didn't um, I'd been I'd been saying that I felt that he would leave uh, at some point but when he did it was still a shock um, mm. You know, and and still very upsetting. But but uh, as I say, we we really thought he was going to go off and and have a successful solo career, but uh, it didn't quite work that way. Which is why he's now trying to be UB40. Mm. <laughs> is your only legal ambition just to stop him using those four letters? Absolutely, that he can do whatever else he likes. He can obviously he's entitled to use uh, UB40 material. Um, you know he. He has as much right to that as, as we do, but yeah. um, he doesn't have a right to the name. It's that simple okay, because the, the band that he left still exists. And there are so many legal precedents for that. You know, yeah. it's um, you can you, you can write a long list of bands that have lost their former singers and carried on as as the band. You know, it's uh, it's it's fairly obvious there are many precedents and as mm. I say when it does eventually get to court there, there isn't an argument that it will happen and we will uh, we will stop him using the name and that is the only ambition I have is mm. to stop him using the name and what a terrible waste of energy and money making lawyers rich absolutely frightening amounts of money mm. yeah but you know are we into the millions yet or is it still He's spending equally frightening amounts of money keeping it out of court, you know, so that he can continue to um, earn a living, I suppose. Having had run-ins with lawyers myself, this can run into hundreds of thousands of pounds, can't it? Oh, and has done already and looks like being even more. What a shame. It goes on. Yeah, what a shame. Well, the good news is you're back on tour and it's going to be a huge tour too, uh, starting at the end of this month and running forever, really. There is no sign of anybody getting bored of your music. UB40 is timeless and I wish you all the best. Robin, Earl, Norman, Jimmy and Brian are back on stage with the uh, UB40 tour through the autumn and 2017 as well. We wish you all the very best. You're such talented guys and uh, we love you very much. I hope all the legal stuff resolves. It bothers me that you're wasting time and energy with with lawyers getting 
getting rich when in fact all you're about is playing great tunes and I hope it all sorts out very soon oh thanks very much feelings exactly the same I know really great to talk to you Robin Campbell the start of UB40 lovely to talk to you cheers Ali